I recently gave a talk to a university on free speech and mentioned Samuel Petty. No one had heard of him. I've also asked numerous academics and others about Samuel Petty. They do not know his name. So in these few minutes, I hope to end 2020 by reminding everybody of his name, Samuel Petey, and why it must be remembered. Samuel Petey was a 47-year-old history and geography teacher who was stabbed and then decapitated in a public street close to his school to the northwest of Paris on the 16th of October. His attacker was an 18-year-old Islamist of Chechen origin. What had Petey done to provoke such a barbaric act? He had done what he was, had done for many years. He taught a lesson on the importance of freedom of speech and freedom of thought as part of a civic education course. During the lesson, he illustrated the extent of the French nation's support for freedom of expression by showing the class some of the Charlie Hebdo cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. But he also said that any Muslim students present could look away or leave the room. Petey was subject to a, a campaign of vilification on social media with calls for him to be um, dismissed. A fatwa was also declared on him by a local Islamist group. Condemnations of the killing and defences of free speech and enlightenment values were made by many, including trade unions in France and indeed around the world. Exactly two months ago today, hundreds of thousands attended demonstrations across France to remember Petey. The hashtags Je suis Samuel and Je suis enseignant trended on social media, as did Je suis Charlie just after the murder of the Charlie Hebdo cartoonists and writers in January 2015. Peter's murder, Peter's murder took place as 14 alleged accomplices went on trial in, in Paris in relation to those murders. From the educational trade unions in the UK, however, the response to the murder of a fellow teacher was a deafening silence. The Association of School and College Leaders, the Educational Institute of Scotland, the National Association of Head Teachers, the National Association of Schoolmasters, Union of Women Teachers, and the University of College Union said nothing, despite appeals for them to condemn the murder and defend free speech. The full list of shame is on the AFAF website. Only the National Education Union mentioned the murder of Patey on its international webpage, but did not say that he was teaching about the importance of free speech, only that he was teaching about human values. No university VC made any comment about the murder. Despite a petition to the Vice Chancellor of the University of Oxford to make a statement. How can you explain this silence? It can only be explained by the fear of being seen to be offensive to Muslims and being denounced as Islamophobic. As Ken and Malik and others have argued, since Ayatollah Khomeini's fatwa against Salman Rushdie, issued on Valentine's Day 1989 for writing the Satanic Verses, Western culture and Western educationalists have internalized the fatwa. The internalization of the fatwa means that all Muslims are seen as victims who are easily and constantly offended and in a gross caricature, caricature as potential Islamists who would support the beheading of a man for defending free speech. The internalization of the fatwa gets expression as in the hashtag, je suis pas Samuel, as it was after the Charlie Hebdo murders with the hashtag, je, suis, je ne suis pas Charlie. The belief that you can defend free speech, but not Charlie Hebdo, that's what they say. But it's free speech, but, but never offend, never blaspheme. But that's not free speech. Free speech is an absolute. The silence about the murder of Samuel Patey from those organizations representing educationalists in the UK is disgraceful. Not merely because of their fear or cowardice, but because their members are responsible, as was Samuel Patey, for the education of future generations. And they do not see that education is worthless without freedom of speech.